absolutely the wrong button is what that was. Hello world. I've got buttons lined up and you'd think I'd know how to use them by this point. Uh, let's see how this goes. So uh, one thing we're going to do... Music's a little hot in the headphones, but... Ooh, yeah, let's see. Oh, so I can control that independently. Alright, I just learned a thing. Yeah, see, if I can get it mixed right so that I can tell what y'all are hearing, or like the volume, that would be awesome. Uh, anyways, hey folks, how y'all doing tonight? Um, or today, or whatever time it is that you're watching this. Uh, VOD. Happy to report that the Alabama Crimson Tide was victorious over Texas A&M today. So that was good. Um, so gonna do a couple things tonight. Thing zero, if you're into computer techie talk, uh, I was gonna install Drupal, well, I'm gonna install Drupal. But before I do that, I got a tweet from this gentleman here um, talking about a blog post I did a while ago, 2015, um, with a text expander snippet in it that um, does date stuff. And by date stuff, I mean something like this. My eye it just probed me. It's hard to do headphones on. Highly professional. Um, so I've got a couple of them. Uh, but if I do date with a semicolon, text expander flips it to that. And if I do DT semicolon semicolon it's that and if I do DTT semicolon it's that I can't remember if there's any more um but anyways he uh let's try a text expander ooh I hope there's no passwords in here there shouldn't be There absolutely shouldn't be, but I don't know if there's any work stuff in here. We're gonna go over here for a second. I will have to go add to my to-do list. Let's do this. Uh, just put this at the top, just because this will be where I find it. Make sure text. Expander is clean of work stuff. And there better not be any passwords in there. I have a hard time believing that I would put a password in there. But I'm not 100% sure I didn't, because I've had Text Expander for a very long time. Um, but let me find, I'll be searching here. Got to get around the mic. Okay, yeah, these are all, get rid of that one. Yeah, I need that one. Stand by. trying to make sure this is all cool. Yeah, this is all cool. All right, so here is my various dates and times. Um, oh, so date one. Yeah, you can see, so actually we can do this. Uh, clear this, and then I just have a folder called dates and times. There we go. Uh, I can actually close all these. Huh. Autocorrect. T with the. That's, that triggers a lot. Uh, templates. There's my HTML5 template. Text. Emojis. Site stuff. Okay. All closed. So let's see if we can figure out which one he was talking about. Um, 
I got a D with three T's. Gives you stuff. So these are, most of these are um, ISO related stuff or versions of that. Oh, update with a timestamp. I, I don't remember most of these. Um, so let's do date one, right? Date one, date two. Oh, whoops. Date four. Ah, it pushes it four days in the future. That's cool. Completely forgot that those existed. Uh, day T, let's just see what these are. Saturday, 10, 30. So, in case you were wondering what day this was shot on, now you know. All right, so let me see what he was saying here. Um, oh, so he's in this post. Function. Oh, this is a JavaScript snippet. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out which one it is. There is JavaScript. ABS ISO date time. I'm gonna guess that's this. Uh, let me just look at the other ones because these are all straightforward, right? I don't use text expander as much as I could. There's that one. That's probably it. Yeah, all the rest of these are straightforward. So that's, yeah, so you can throw JavaScript in there too, which is cool. So somewhere in this mess, he's saying one minor error that threw me off a moment, defining AWS month toward the end of the line, you put AWS when you went AWS date. Okay. Uh, I wonder, stand by, what is this called? Oh yeah, ISO semicolon. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So, let's see if we can get that on one. So months is here. AWS date. I wonder if I. Oops, live coding. It's my stream notes for now. Oh, I guess I should put in stream notes. Uh, the other thing we're going to do tonight, I may actually do it before trying to install Drupal, is setting up to grab URLs from Safari and make um, links for me and grab them all and make them much easier to deal with. So here's month. Yep, AWS right there. Yeah, AWS date. That get month. Come on, yeah, so I just goofed. I fixed it in Text Expander, but then didn't fix it. Uh, also, maybe getting closer and closer to figuring out how to, or taking the time to go figure out how uh, to normalize these things and to find. Uh, a good playlist. So how, oh yeah, so wait a minute, check this out. We might be able to do this. So if I grab this link, oh shit, this is on my old site. This is on, wait, is it? Yeah, this is on the old site. This is the other, this is the old domain. Uh, I have two websites right now. Um, that one bounces, actually. But if you go to alanwsmith.com without the dub 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 and on HTTP instead of HTTPS, you get the old site. Right now, the homepage bounces, but that page is still in a um, in a cache somewhere. So I'm just uh, well. So crap. 
I need to fix that. How? So the old site is here. Mm, the old site is somewhere. Deco original site. Prod. It's been a while since I've been here. Pages, is that pages? Nope. Posts. See, I want this directory structure for Hugo. Oops. Oh, I need to set up something that goes over here. Because in Hugo, when I go look at my content directory, you get all of these, 931. Versus Jekyll, you go into the year directory, and then you get them. So you have at least some chance of finding stuff. Um, but eventually I'll work on that too. Um, so let's come over here. I'm going to change it here, but I'm not actually going to deploy the site because it's been so long since I've done a Jekyll deploy that I'm worried that things are going to explode. Uh, what's it called? What's his name? Stream notes. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's the page I'm on now. Where? Oh, I lost it. Uh, ISO 8601. Find me ISO 8601. Oh, I gotta I gotta bump that font down right now. Oh wait a minute. It's fixed here. Oh, that's weird. Somehow that didn't get deployed. That's super weird. By the way, if you've never seen this computer file video talking about time and computers, you should watch it. It's awesome and awful. AWS, yeah. Okay, well, it's the source is good. Uh, so we're just gonna jump right into the server and do it that way. Oh my god. Um, uh, web. Can't remember where all this stuff is. AlanWSmith.com. Eh, whatever. I'll fix that later. Uh, no, I'll fix it now. Web AlanWSmith.com. HTML. Is this it? Oh crap, ISO. This looks likely. So, month. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is hard to look at. What was it on? Nope. Let's come back here. AWS get month. Should be up close to the top. Oh, AWS date. Okay, I gotta find. So it should be AWS with that, right? There we go. Date. All right. Only problem is AWS date I get month. That was it, right? Also, what we could do is test it. Uh, 
uh, let's make a new one. Let's paste that. ISO two, ISO T, E S T, semicolon. ISO test. Gotta actually tell it to make it JavaScript. So content, JavaScript. Oh, come on. ISO test semicolon. That looks like it works. So let me see. I should have actually grabbed. This is where it was screwed up, right? Yep. Cool. So that's working. All right. Sweet. Got it fixed. Delete. Uh. about 13, 16, whatever. Uh, right on. So, TU semicolon thumbs up is also a text expander for me to give me thumbs up. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Thanks for the heads up. Just fixed it. Sweet. Uh, cool. Stream notes. Yay. Everything. Oh, I'm still not used to how giant things are on the screen for me to make it look good for y'all. That is not a complaint. That is merely a un being unused to it. Okay, so that yeah, so that's my Jekyll site, um, which is I built some scripts to move stuff over to Hugo because um, I think I tried a straight ingestion with something that they had and it didn't really work great. Uh, so I kind of built my own. It wasn't too bad because it was just moving markdown files to markdown files. It was mainly just getting stuff in the header. Um, and then putting stuff in a directory file. Um, that looks like some type of neat computer number. 13124774. One, one, seven, seven, um, I should stop drinking Sprite on the stream. Cool. Okay, so now. Close that. Do I want to do it in Drupal first, or do I want to do the link stuff first? I go back and forth. Let's do the Drupal first, because we're here. Uh, we're at about 19 minutes. So I've used Drupal before, and I liked it, and Basically what I'm going to do is, so I've got this Launchpad site, right, that we've used before, um, which runs on this, whoops. Um, which runs on this uh, MAMP server. Ta-da. And it's, oh, it's got Python. I wonder if you can... Oops, crap. Come on. Uh, all right. What am I doing? Uh, I should have a different thing for that. Um, Where am I going? Drupal. 
quadruple map. Does that work? How to create a local environment using the map. From 2013. Eighteen. It's more recent. It creates a local server. PHP, MySQL, right out of the box. This will make Drupal much easier to install because components will have to be installed separately. Got map. Get Drupal. Create the Drupal database. I swear, this song. They have, there's 500 songs in there. And it plays the same 10. I mean, I guess it's possible that I stream long enough that I'm here in the loops or whatever, but. Uh, go to the map start page, PHP my men. Coalition left handed. Privilege, add user account, database, under database. Just run user socket. Okay, so you can run Drupal off MySQL. Okay. Give me your password. Just PHP memory limits for scripts. Wait, I thought Drupal was, I'm not, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. I don't want Drupal. I want Django. This is what I was looking for. Uh, the Python one. Lots of Django makes it easier to build the better web. Yeah, so what I'm looking to do is replace this and my little tools and all the other stuff. I want this to be a a, a framework site instead of just me hacking PHP. And I what I've been doing a bunch of or the language I'm using these days is Python, so I want to go with a Python framework. Um, Django map. Tracks are so we're familiar with map, MySQL database, then Python manage migrate. This might be an okay chill one. Super soft. It's a new song. I have knowledge of map, but I give you some elements of Django database with WAMP. First map, you need to create a database. Yeah, so 2012. 2014, yeah. Looks like nobody started this in a long time. Um So here's here's the thing, like Historically, I haven't really set stuff up like this type of software directly on the Mac. I've always used something like MAP, MAMP, um, or I'd set up a virtual machine and run the virtual machine. Like I kind of like that isolation, but like it's more hassle. Because like what I could do is fire up a virtual machine in any number of things and run Django inside the virtual machine. So it's got its own Postgres database and its own web server. Um, but I'm not going to do that this time. Um, I'm going to just, just install it, which by the way, do I have Postgres on here? No. Okay. Thought I did. Uh, so we're going to just, we're just going to run it and see what happens. Try a tutorial, dive in, Django, installing Django. Let's do it. Uh, install Python. What Python can I use? Django version three. I well, I've got Python three, so whatever. 
Blaze version of Python. Select a database. This stuff is necessary only if you can work with a large database. Like, uh, to install such a base, consult the database. Only necessary if you'd like to work with a large database engine like Postgres. I don't know. It doesn't tell me what the other option is. Note. I would like to know what the other option is. You just run like uh, SQLite. Got three options. Saw the official release. Yep, that sounds cool. Provided by our operating system distribution. That sounds interesting. What do we got here? Ooh, install pip. This is recommended. Wait a minute. I thought I said. What's this? Took me in the same place. Take a look at the virtual environment. This toy things, Python, which are more practical installing system wide. Yep. It also allows installing packages without admin privileges. Yeah, yeah. After you've created an activated virtual environment, enter this command. Oh, yeah. Linux and Mac. What does this have on Windows? Pi, yeah, pip install. Installing a distribution. This is what it was supposed to take me to. I just want to see if there's like Mac. Mm, I don't see anything that just says Mac. Third party distributions. Ready to run version of Apache, MySQL, Postgres. Not Mac OS. So I install a, oh Mac ports. I haven't heard about Mac ports in forever. Brew is the one uh, that I use now. I didn't think I thought Mac ports was kind of dead. Sorry, folks. Sorry, guys. Folks, kids, people, whatever. Uh, how to install Django? Wait a minute. Where's my uh? Uh, okay, so let's do it. Where to do it? Here, just do it. So Python, whoops, Python three module venv venv to create a virtual environment environment for Python 3 in this directory. So we're going to do that. Then source virtual environment, oh, whoops, virtual environment bin activate. It, now we're in the virtual environment of Python. So if I do which Python, which Python, it's this. And it's also Python version is three, whatever. Whoops. That exploded. How do you get the Python version? Well, there, here it is. Anyways, Python, whoops. Oh, it went into the interpreter or the REPL or whatever they call it. There you go, I spelled it wrong somewhere. So let's give it a shot. Python m pip install. That's kind of weird. You could should just be able to do pip. It's all pip. Well, I'll do it the way that they say. Successfully installed Django. Okay, but we're using an older version of pip, but that's okay because it installed Go 
Got it. Hmm. Models and databases. Models. This is telling me how to make models, but I need to make the database. Before you can use Django, you'll need to install it. I like this font. See, it doesn't give me... Tutorial. Okay. We see we've already got it installed. You can tell Django's installed, which verse is running by running this. Let's just do it. Python M Django version. 312. Alright, so we got it installed. It's written for 31, close enough. 312, whatever. Create a project. to shift this. Django admin. Start project. My site. Okay. This will create my site in your current directory. Yep, there it is. Uh, I'll need to avoid naming projects after built-in things. Okay. If your background is in plain old PHP with no use of modern frameworks, you're probably used to putting code under the web server's document root. With Django, you don't do that. It's not a good idea to put any of this Python code within your web server's document root because it risks the possibility that people may be able to view your code on the web. Not good for security. Put your code in some directory outside of the document root, such as, ho such as home my code. I guess I can just put it up. So this should be the site root, I'm guessing. The outer my site, my site directory is container for your project. Its name doesn't matter. Manage.py. I kind of whoops, kind of remember this. command line utility that lets you do stuff. I remember this a little bit. I wonder if this is just going to use a MySQL or a SQLite database, the development server. Yeah. Let's verify your Python project works. It's all spacey. Should we put this in chill? Why not? It's already there. Let's verify your Django project works. CD into my site if you haven't already, which we just did. Whoops. Wrong thing. Run Python manage run server. Unapplied migrations. Yep. Started Django server, lightweight web server. Oh, it's got its own development server. Okay. Written purely in Python, include Django. So you, okay, that's cool. So we don't have to install Apache. Nice. And I should be able to use. I'm guessing I can use this dev server for my local site. Like I'm not hosting anything on it. It's just my Mac hits it whenever I load a web web page. So I'm guessing it'll be all right. We'll we'll, we'll verify that. Alex Gunther, don't use this server for anything resembling a production environment only while developing after I just said all that but like I guess technically I'm just kind of always developing maybe we're in the business of making web frameworks not was ah, maybe someday we move it to Apache and see what happens oh there's a server running oh let's try this there you go there's a web server running Django 
Congrats. What fault run server starts on port 8000. That's cool. You can change it to whatever. Cool. If you want the server's IP, pass it along with the port, for example, to listen to all public IP addresses, which is useful if you're running on if you're on Vagrant or want to show off your work to other computers and networks. Yeah, I don't want it public. Dev server automatically reloads Python code on each request as needed. You don't need to restart the server for code changes to take effect. Okay. Some actions like adding files don't trigger restart. Okay. Code pulls out. Uh, cool. And the setup ready start to work. Each application, right, Django consists of a Python package that follows a certain convention. Django comes with a utility that automatically generates the basic directory structure of an app. So you can focus on writing code rather than creating directories. Nice. Difference between a project and an app. An app is a web application that does something. A web blog system or a blog system. A database of public records or a small poll app. A project is a collection of configuration and apps for a particular website. A project can contain multiple apps, an app can be multiple projects. Okay, terminology. Apps can live anywhere on the Python path. Interesting. This tutorial will create in the same directory as my manage.py. So it can be imported as its own top level module, that is rather than a sub module of what's your thing. All right, so kill the server, I'm guessing. Start app pulse. Let's walk through the tutorial. I'll create the directory. Um, do I have tree? I do have tree. I'm just gonna add that to my links. Yeah, here I'm install tree. Tree path, whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, directory structure will house a pull application. Let's write your first open polls views. All right, so we're gonna open polls here. Views. I did this a couple years back, uh, and, but I don't remember really much of it at all. Let's write your first view. Okay, open, got it. Put the following piece of code in it. Index request response hello world oh wait i need that full thing is that already in there oh interesting see why i don't like that it doesn't tell me what to do with that line simple as you possible it's called a view we need to map it to a url and for this, we need a URLs conf. Create URLs conf in the polls directory. Create a file called urls.py. See, why didn't I make that? urls.py. In polls urls include the following. So from Django URLs import path. From the current directory import views. URL patterns path nothing, so that's probably the root. Views.index name index. Don't get it yet, but we'll see what happens. Next step is to point the root URL conf at the polls URLs module in my site URLs. Okay, this is getting 
add an import for Django URLs include and insert and include in the URL patterns list. So yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna copy and paste the code, but like, that's a little, oh, it's actually bounce up a directory. Uh, let's just open this, there we go. So my site has its own URLs. Ooh. URL patterns, list route URLs to views. Add an import from my app, import, add URL pattern path, home, home, class-based views, oh, function-based, class-based. Include another URL conf, which I think is what we're doing. So, to see what this looks like compared to what we uh, what's already in the file. Yeah, so those two lines are the same. All it's doing is adding this. The include function allows referencing other URL comps. Whether Django, whenever Django encounters include. It chops off whatever part of the URL matched up to that point and sends the remaining string to include URL for further processing. This, I uh, like, I think I get that, but like this, I'm not. This sentence without a, or these, this paragraph, whatever, these two sentences without a really explicit example is not helpful to me. The idea behind include is to make it easy to plug and play URL since pull, like I, that's not, I'm not that deep into this yet. And you're not showing me an example, like that's, that could be done better. Um, I remember having some, some issues with this tutorial first time I did it. Maybe I'll make my own. So, is that gonna work? Nope. Oh. Include is not defined. What? I thought I copied and pasted the code. Uh, all right, so there's the run server. apps versus whatever, which again, like just walk me through, just let me copy and paste and then point out changes. So this is in views, just make sure we got all this stuff. Views, again, I don't know about that. All right. So we got that. Plus banjo. Oh, did I do this in the URLs? Maybe I didn't do this in the URLs. Is that what happened? Oh, I just made the file. No. Oh, wait. Migrations, pulls URLs. No. I did it. Right? It's all the same. It's all the same. Oh, actually. Uh, you know what I should do? Hang on a second. Uh, I just realized my stream notes are wrong. Because it still says I'm installing... Uh, Drupal, which is not what I'm doing. My URLs. I'm going to go back and actually read that error message in a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I may have seen it. Where am I going? Here. This URL's... Aha. See, it looked like I was doing the same thing, but it's this... It's this line right here. Import, include, and path. That changed.
I mean, I could have copied, oh, I could have copied that whole thing really. And then um, pasted it. But again, that's another, like what, what I would like when I'm looking for stuff is like, if that happened, it would be like, change this line to this. Right, that's what I'm looking for. Like super explicit, like everything. And then at the bottom say, here is the full file. Cause like this one, I was thrown off by it because whichever one was up there doesn't include that top line. Which one was it? Use? Yeah. So like, am I supposed to keep that? I have no idea. It just says put that code in. So I guess I could remove it. Certainly not explicit about it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, so I'm, I've, I've been frustrated with this tutorial before. Um, hey, Alan, why don't you make your own? Well, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe that's what this is in a very poor way. All right, let's see if it starts up now. Manage, oh yeah, it's doing a SQLite database. Nope, name path is not defined. Did I, I probably screwed something up that time. Oh yeah, I'm all over the place with that. Let's, maybe, that one's on me. Let's try that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got the sniffles this week. There we go. That's a red, but this came up. Which makes me think. Nope. Now I've an index, verify it's working with the following commands. Go to polls in your browser. Why didn't we make the home page first? There we go. Yeah, you're at the polls index. Hello world. Okay, so we got something going. Yeah, if you get an error here, check that you're going to polls instead of that. Okay, fair enough, but like, whatever. That one, yeah, I'll give him that one. Path function is past four arguments, two required, route and view, and two optional. Quargs, or how do you say that, name. At this point, it's worth reviewing what these arguments are for. <laughs> really? Uh, route is a string that contains a URL pattern. When processing a request, Django starts at the first pattern in URL patterns, it makes its way down the list. Okay, here we go. Comparing the request against these other patterns. Don't search get and post parameters or the domain name. Again, this is like not beginner stuff. For example, in request to whatever, the URL will look for my app and request to that, it URL will also look for my app, but it won't look for, and implicitly it won't look for that. Yeah, this is ah, frustration. Good tutorials are really hard to do, but like still, I'm gonna complain about it and maybe talk about ways to fix it. Path, when Django finds a matching pattern, it calls a specific view function with a HTTP request object as the first argument and any captured values from the route as keyword arguments. We'll give an example of this in a bit. Why the hell did you even tell me that then? 
here's a really complicated batch of words. We'll talk about it again later when you won't have any memory of what this was. Oh. Uh, I'm now the here. You know what? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Write a, write your own. I'm just gonna put it that way. I don't wanna say write a good one. Write your own Django install and basics tutorial. And maybe a video, which is probably a good way to do it. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the path argument. So there's a really there's a really good um, book on what was the iOS development language? Objective C. Uh, from I think it was called Code Ranch, but I I really liked in the introduction. I I did a little bit of the of the book. Um, again, before the brain, ooh, all over the place. And, but I really like the introduction where the author was basically saying, look, we're going to walk you through a whole bunch of stuff and you're not going to understand a lot of it to start with, but we want to get you writing code that works. And then we'll go back and walk into the pieces and explain it to you once you kind of have your feet in it. And I really like that approach versus this where I, I mean, I've written a couple pieces, but I don't like, this isn't really doing an explanation for me. I mean, I guess maybe that's what they're trying to go for, but like, it's not, it ain't doing it for me. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it and it'll be, mine will be like, I'll go, oh crap. Yeah, this is as good as you can get. But I think I can do better. Uh, name a URL. I'll let you refer to it unambiguously, unambiguously from elsewhere in Django. Maybe all the songs just sound the same. Um, the powerful features. I'm in a grumpy mood tonight, apparently. Powerful features allow you to make global changes, URL patterns, or your project by only touching a single file. I mean, I'm going to sneeze in a second. When you're comfortable with a basic request and response flow, read part two of this tutorial to start working on your database. Like, what the hell? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed this. Arbitrary keyword arguments can be passed in a dictionary to the target view. We aren't going to use this feature in the Django tutorial. Again, don't tell me about it then. Like, if that's an advanced thing, reveal it in the advanced tutorial. All right, let's keep moving. This picks up where one left off. Right, database. Now, open. Not this file. My site settings.py. Where's my site settings.py? Oh, is this it? Yeah. Wait. Oh, it's under my, so there's two my sites. It's my site, my site settings. Uh-oh, you see my secret key. Keep the secret key used in production secret. Yes. I will do that. Unfortunately, this is production, so you now, now all know my secret key. Should have a firewall in between the world and me right now, though, so I should be okay. Uh, now open settings. It's a normal Python module, module level variables by default. We use SQLite. Uh, SQLite is included in Python, so you won't need to install anything, right? 
starting your first real project, however you want a more scalable database. Yeah, and this is where at one point I was basically setting up a virtual machine to actually, like I really like the idea of have the same development environment that you're gonna have in production. So I would I was building virtual machines and setting up Django in there with a uh, Postgres database and a Nginx or Apache or whatever it was. But like this isn't a production thing for me. This is just a little tool set that look that works locally. So I don't care about um, about trying to make it you know fully robust and production ready. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, it's production ready when the server runs and I can add and take stuff away from it. Uh, I don't wish to use another database. Name of the database. Yep, it's all good, so it's just using that. If you're not using SQLite, we are. For databases other than SQLite, we don't have to worry about. All right, editing my settings, set the time zone to your time zone. All right. Oh. Which uh, localizations? I'm supposed to use text transfer uh, time zones. I'm just looking for the format we need to do. Okay, so it's looking for Europe, Paris kind of stuff. Um, I think it's just America, New York. What is the name of... No, it's not going to be an abbreviation. I wonder if I could just do UTC minus 5 or minus 4 or whatever. North America. I keep going to the same page. Alright, whatever. I'll find that out later. Uh, what is this? Hey, it worked. I can close that one. Close worked. Nice. Uh, all right. Pretend we set the time zone. Also note installed apps at the top of the file. Roger that. All of which come with Django. Cool. These are included by default as convenience. Some of these make at least one database table though, so we need to create the database to do that, run the following command. Okay. Making some migrations. What if the server has to be stopped? Hey, migrations. Now we shouldn't get that warning when we start it back up. Migrate command looks at installed apps settings and creates any necessary database tables according to the database settings in your my site settings pie file and the database migrations shipped with the app cover this later you'll see a message for each migration that applies if you're interested run the command line okay like we said yeah, and see, that's another thing I would do if I was doing a tutorial. I wouldn't talk about MySQL or Oracle or Postgres or whatever. Like, there should be one path through with basically no decisions. With no decisions. The only decision would be, like, enter your name. Okay, my name's Alan. Your name is Carl. Or whatever. For the minimalists... 
but not everybody needs these apps. If you don't need any or all of them, feel free to comment them out and delete the appropriate lines. Like, again, that's not, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm just gonna pick this thing apart. Uh, creating models, okay. Now you define your models, essentially your database layout with additional metadata, philosophy. The model is a single definitive source of truth about your data. It contains several essential field behaviors, okay. And go follows the dry principle. Should probably actually explain that instead of linking off if you're going for new folks. The goal is to find your data model in one, pla one place and automatically derive things from it. This includes the migrations. Unlike Ruby on Rails, for example, migrations are entirely derived from your model files. And are essentially a history of that Django can roll through to update your database and schema. That's that's maybe not necessary right now. Like, te teach me how to add before you teach me the philosophy of math. Uh, our polls app will create two models, questions and choices, or question and choice, singular. A question has a question and publication date. A choice has two fields. The text of the choice and a vote tally. Each choice is associated with a question. See, show before you tell. Like, and also maybe not something that requires two things. Like, start with one thing. Uh, these concepts are represented by Python classes. See, like, that's a fair amount of code for me to just throw in. And, like, it's kind of intimidating. Not as much for me, but I'm just trying to think of, like, somebody who's just trying to, like, get into making a thing. Who's maybe not got a lot of experience. Like, I don't know. It just it feels like for a beginner's tutorial, this is, like, that's just not the way I would do it. Uh, sorry to whoever did this. I don't mean to rip on your stuff other than criticism, right? Where am I going? I want to be doing stuff. This is feels like not doing stuff. Also, I'm talking about a lot. Whatever. It's fine. Um, polls, models. Let's get back into it. Polls, models. See, now it's there. So cool. Here, I'll just copy that way. Does that work? Yeah. Here, each model is represented by a class that subclasses Django DB models model. Each model has a number of class variables, each of which represents a database field in the model. Each field is represented by an instance of the field class. For example, char field for character fields and date time field for date times. This tells Django what type of data each field holds. Like, name the field instance. Is the field name and machine friendly? Like, I kind of want to skip through this, but I want to read it too, right? Um, you'll use this value in your Python code, and your database will use this column name, okay? The name of each field instance, question text, or pub date. I kind of want to see the full line and say here, whatever. You can use the optional first position argument to a field to designate a human readable name. That's probably this one. That's used a couple that's used in a couple of introspective parts of Django, and it doubles as documentation. If this field isn't provided, Django will use a machine-readable name. An example, we've only defined the human-readable name for question.pubdate. Wait a minute. 
question pub oh, I guess date published is the human readable one. You can use the optional first position argument of fields to designate a human. I just did that. Some field classes have required arguments. Char field, for example, requires that you give it a max length. That's used not only in the Davis schema, but in the validation as we'll soon see. Okay. A field also has various optional arguments. In this case, we've defaulted to, z we've set the default value of votes to zero. Okay. I don't have context for that yet. Finally, net relationship is defined using a foreign key. So you're already teaching foreign key, like, <sighs> that tells Django each choice is related to a single question. Yeah, we knew this was coming, right? Because that's how they talk. Django spirits are all the common database relationships. Many to one, many to many, one to one. Like, this database, or this tutorial is not for beginners. And maybe that's why I'm struggling with it, is I think this should be for beginners, but it's not. Small bit of model code gives Django a lot of information. With it, Django is able to create a database schema. Yeah. Create a Python database access API for accessing question and choice objects. Okay. But first, we need to tell our project that polls is installed. Django apps are pluggable. You can use them in multiple projects and you can distribute apps because they don't have to be tied to a given Django installation. Again, that's oops. Angry. Uh, not something that I need to deal with right now. Need a better move, boom so I could move it forward while I'm talking lower. Uh, to include the app in our project, we need to reference its configuration class and install apps. Pulse apps class. The pulls config class is in pulls apps pi file. So it's dotted path is pulls dot apps dot pulls configs okay edit my site settings pi and add the dotted path to installed path so it looks something like this so this is what we want to add actually i'm going to copy the whole thing and see what changes so my site settings again installed apps I'm guessing this goes by one Now Django knows to include polls. Let's run another command. Python manage make migrations polls. You should see something similar to the following. Okay, I did see something like that. I may have seen something exactly like that as a matter of fact. Uh, by running make migrations, you're telling Django that you've made some changes to models. In this case, new ones. And you like to be stored as a migration. That's how Django stores stuff, and thus your database schema files on a disk. You can read the migration for your new model if you like. Don't worry, you're not expected to read every time Django makes one, but they're designed to be human readable, human editable. In case you want to manually tweak how Django does stuff. All right, so, whoops, let's get there. Oh, actually it's in here, isn't it? Polls, migrations, 1.py. Ooh, lots of stuff. Django, import migrations, models, deletion, special true dependencies, operations, Create model, name questions, fields. It's all your database stuff. Gotcha, so that's where it makes all the database stuff. That's cool, okay. Sure didn't need to look at that for a beginner tutorial. But maybe that's the problem. Like it's doing all these different things and it's like, 
You keep jumping around. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be a long tutorial if we don't get moving. Uh, scramble run migrations. I wonder how many parts there are to this. Um, it's called migrate. And we'll get to it in a moment. But first, let's see what SQL that migration would run. The SQL migrate command takes migration names and runs their SQL. I'm just going to copy that. Not something I need for a beginner tutorial. Note the following. The exact output will vary. Table names automatically generated. Primary keys are automatically added. Adds ID to a foreign key. Excuse me. Uh, Select so Postgres not to enforce foreign key until the end of the translation. Okay, stay with the database you're using. It doesn't actually run the migration of the database. It prints the screen so you can see what Django thinks is required. Okay. Not a beginner tutorial thing. Now I'm get again, create your database tables. Okay, so now we're actually gonna do something. Like all that stuff just takes me off of like the path. <sighs> migrate command takes all the migrates to the applied Django. Tracks the ones which are applied to a special table and called Django migrations. Don't need to know that. Same song. I do not understand. It's gonna be funny if these are all too loud. Migration's very powerful. Specializes in upgrading your database without losing data. That's nice. We'll cover them in more depth later. But for now, remember, change your models, run Python, make migrations. Run Python migrate. The reason these are separate. <coughs> you commit migrations to your version control system and ship them with your app. They not only make development easier, they're also useful for other developers in production. Okay. Playing with the API. All right, I'm skipping this, playing with the Python. Like, I kind of remember this too. It's like, I don't need to mess with the shell to figure this stuff out. Like, I'm building a web tool. in the shell explore the database api yeah so none of that wait a minute question question object one is a helpful representation of this object let's fix that and now i'm working on stuff for the uh support add string method your models not for your own convenience from dealing with interactive prompt but also because objects representations are used to automatically generated admin okay whatever I'm just going to start going copy and paste real fast. Let's also add a, a custom method to this model. Wait, where did we add strings? Oh, sorry, I blew past one. models this is just all over the place I'm gonna keep saying that all right is this it oops where'd that go that's what we're doing right Still haven't looked at a web page. Also, let's add custom methods to this model. 
Still haven't looked at a web page. Are we in models are still? Yeah. So. Django DB models. Lord, this music. Oh, no, so. <laughs> Why? Why? Hope all these changes I'm making work. Because I haven't seen them go. Or anything. Note the addition, date time. And from Django for Django. Reference standard date time module. Yep. If you're familiar with the time zone handling JSON, you can learn more about time zone support docs. Don't need to do that right now. Save the changes to a new. Python interactive shell. I don't want to do a shell. Look at all this crap. Uh, generating admin philosophy. Okay. Generating admin side restart and clapped add change. Delete content is tedious work that doesn't require much creativity. For that reason, Django entirely automates creation of admin interfaces. Great. It's written in a newsroom environment. Very clear separation between content publishers and the public site. Site manager uses a system to add stories, events, sports scores, etc., and the content is displayed on the public site. Okay. Django solves the problem of creating a unified interface for site admins by adding content. The admin isn't intended to be used by site visitors. It's for managers. Again, I don't know if we really need that. Okay, first we need to create a user who can log into the admin site. Run the following. Create super user. All right, still haven't looked at the site, but maybe we're getting close. Inconsistent use of tabs and spaces. So somewhere in here. This is frustrating. Oh god, is it gonna tell me? Polls models line 11. Polls models line 11. I said that. Are these spaces? Oh god. Did it generate spaces? Wait a minute. Did I copy and paste that and it was spaces? Is that what's happened? I bet that's what happened. Leave blank to use Alan S. Sure. Email address. Nope. Password. Is it hidden? Looks like it's hidden. We're gonna hide it anyways. I don't think we can see that, can you? Ooh, I can just drop it right down there. All right, come to our password manager, log in. Giant freaking password. Dot com. That'd be a great dot com, giant freaking password dot com. successfully. Why do I have two chromes going? It's kind of weird. The final step, yep. Hey, look, we get to start the server again. Uh, 
uh, where am I going? I know what's going on. You gotta, I'm not going to the right URL, right? You gotta go to either polls or admin or whatever. Yeah, you gotta admin. That's not bad looking. We're in. Why wasn't I here three minutes after starting this tutorial? That is my question. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Where's my actual tutorial? Excuse me. Install Python. This is way on back there, isn't it? Where's my actual tutorial? Oh, when I clicked on it, did it take me? Uh... Yeah, they should have. I also might have made that open a uh, new window. That's just me, though. Since translation is turned on default, if you set language code, okay, again, near the admin site. We should see a few types of editable content, groups and users. They are provided by Django Auth. Groups, users, okay, cool. Make the poll app modifiable in the admin. But where's our poll? It's not displayed on the admin page. Only one more thing to do. And until the admin that question objects have an admin interface to do this, polls admin. And edit to look like this file. Pulls admin. Explore the free admin functionality. Now the registered question Django knows that should be displayed on the admin page. Click questions. Now you're at the change list part. Page for questions. Page displays all the questions in the database, lets you choose one and change it. There's the what's up we created earlier on the command line. So I'm not gonna see it, but uh, refresh. There we go. Questions. Nice. Why do I have to do all this stuff? Please correct the error below. Fields required, okay. Oops. Time now. Oh, I could just click that. You're four hours behind server time. Save. There we go, there's a question. Things in it here, forms automatically generated, different models have different field types, date time, whoops, whoops, clicked on that, nice. Actually, I don't wanna save that. All right, so it gives you HTML widgets that map to the field type. Each date time field gets free JavaScript shortcuts today, pop up now. Bottom of the page, you a couple of hours save, save and continue, save and add another, delete. The value of date published doesn't matter the time you created in question, tutorial one, probably means you forgot to set time zone. Yeah, it just didn't work. Well, what happens if we, does that actually give me a thing? Oh, here we go, America, yeah, so it'd be America, New York. Maybe one of those things would actually link you to, uh, that just takes you right back to the same thing. It's funny. Um, but to like the global list of time zones. When you're comfortable, let's go to three. All right, what's here? Writing your first Django app. I'm gonna do this one next time or later, <coughs> not later, next time, some other time. Uh, I'm kind of like, that really should have taken me three minutes to get to there.
maybe four. So we're going to call that for now. Um, uh, oh my God, the hour 26. Good Lord. Yeah, I was hoping to make more progress on that, but that didn't happen. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to keep all these tabs open because it might be helpful for the thing that I was looking to do. What I'm after and the, the thing that I... Uh, started looking for earlier and found something that I think might help us um, is yesterday uh, when I was doing the stream I ended up with 30 tabs open and I wanted to get a whole bunch of them into the stream notes not necessarily all of them but a whole bunch of them like the majority of them and so it was kind of this tedious process of copy the URL out of the tab Paste, like, so the, the basic process, right, is, I'm gonna do it here. Um, so is this tutorial three? Yeah, so copy the link, go to Sublime Text, make a markdown thing. Um, Django, Tutorial section three, and then paste. And then really quick, I'm gonna actually say, this is where to pick up. But like building all that, it's not awful, but like surely there's a way we can make that faster and easier and automated. So I started looking around because I want because what I, my goal is to get that and then maybe even something a little better. Um, oh, there's no description. So pretend there's a description here. Uh, close that. Nope. So whatever. This isn't going to be a good description, but like lots of pages. Oh, I don't have a main description, but I've got a Twitter image description. Yeah, so you could maybe parse that. Whatever, pull some description out too, if you can get it. Um, I guess I should stay on that. So that I can, basically what I'm looking for, right, is, uh, is to automatically loop through all of my open tabs in Safari and at a minimum produce this where uh, this part is the title of the page, whichever's in the title tag, and then you get the link. And then if there is a description of some sort, you could throw the description over here and then do that for all the tabs that I have open. Cause you could just go boom and then I can edit from there. So that's, that's what I'm after. Um, and I wasn't sure if that was even gonna be possible, um, but I found, I'll have to, I may have to find it, but I can probably search for it again. Um, gotta get the active tab, the consultant, this is it. Yeah, capture all tabs in Safari as URLs to the clipboard. Apple script again, uh, which is turning into be a little bit of a theme of this. Um, so tell application Safari to set docs text to, this is that same song or one of the same songs. That's the same song. I just clicked on it. Um, set doc text. I don't know what that is to nothing. Set window count to count every window 
where visible is true. Repeat with X from one to window count. Okay, so we count, we're going through all the windows. Set tab count to number of tabs in window. Oh, so this is not only, nice. Yeah, this isn't just the tabs, it's the windows. I was thinking tabs were windows, or windows were tabs. So it loops through the tabs for each window. Set tab name to name of tab. Tab URL. So doc text just must be a string. And line feed as string. And repeat, set clipboard to doc text. Sweet. Script editor. Uh, script, new script. So we're just gonna try it. Oh, it didn't format. It's a bummer. I don't know if that matters or not. Expression, property of key form, etc. But found unknown token. Hang on a second. It may not like these. I probably could have done these by hand. That's what was freaking it out. Surely it didn't just do all that like right then. Ha! That's phenomenal. Oh, that's great. This is amazing. Uh, so let's do this at doc text to doc text and tab name. So we want to have I need an expression there, or a string there, sorry. I don't know why it turned purple. Is that just because it's an edit? Yeah, I think that's because it's an edit. Tab URL. And quote, close paren, close quote, throw an and. Well, there's our markdown. Oh, page not found. That's awesome. Yeah, so now... Now I'm trying to figure out how far I want to go with this. Um, cause what, cause the next thing would be, so I'm probably just, I'm going to, so here, let's play around with this. Uh, let's go to PyCharm. Let's make ourselves a new directory. Uh, or do I want to put this in? So originally I was hoping that I could put this inside uh, Django, that I could get Django basically up and running for the basics, which I probably could make a page or do whatever, but we'll just do it the old fashioned way in PHP. And to do that, okay, thank you. Let's make a new directory here. Do 
URL getter. Getter? Is that how you spell getter? That's uh, not where we need to be. I should put that down so I can't see it. Eh, whatever. Should be prod. URL getter. Index PHP. Uh, don't like it when it does that. There we go. So now, how do I run a script? So I can call it, so let me just save that. I wanna see if I can call, first of all, I need to, Tell that person, awesome. I am looking for the word save. So the first thing to do is to go see if we can make it work on the command line. Oh, how do we output? So it's going to the clipboard. I don't want it on the clipboard. Um, Apple script, script, print, pring. Said I would uh, like to write the results from calculation window. Call results. It's for logs. So if I do shell script, so log is correctly doing this. However, if you use it's more familiar with the shell script, you can do the following. That's not helpful. Oh, yeah, so I guess what I should do is display dialogue. Nope. Close tabs. I'm not using Apple script. Well, how did. Uh, OSA. Script, print, Apple script. Print to stand out with Apple script. That sounds awesome. It's not really how you're trying to run on the terminal. But I assume you save an Apple script file in text. Turn on the file. I call it the terminal ways in the path. Call the file in terminal by just using the path of the file here. Set output to song. Oh, do shell script. And you echo. Turn your desired text output with a return statement at the end of your script. That sounds handy. That also gets more of an upvote. Okay. Figure it out. There are going to be several outputs like this, and the last will be visible. So just to say the strings as you go. That's 
interesting. I'm just going to return it. Uh, where was it? Can you turn down here? Uh, is this run? Whoop. So now... Oh, so what we should do is, while we got this, I want to share. How do I go to that? Just go to it like that, I guess. Uh, so terminal. However, oh, I can't get anything buffering. Yeah, his question isn't that great, but the answer is what I need. All right, so we've got we've got our script. We do USA script tab parser script. Wait, and an OSA script. What did I do? I spelled it wrong. Oh, I turn wants to do Safari. Yep. There you go. That's awesome. All right, so now let's see if we can get PHP to run that. Uh, shell execute. What's the difference between shell execute and execute? versus execute. That's probably exactly what I'm looking for. One of them returns something and the other one doesn't, maybe? Inbuilt, which is used to execute commands, and returns the completed output as a string. Alias for the back tick. Fails, returns null. Execute function returns the last line of the output. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so outputs, I don't know where they're getting Oh, LS, okay. They should have used the same example. Uh, but yeah, so we want shell execute because we want to do the full thing. And then... OSA script E or C? Oh no, actually I don't need the E because that's telling it that I, it's on the command line. Uh, I just need maybe, ooh. There's your computer hacker code for the day. Fade Dead. Fade Dead is the name of my new band. <laughs> Tab parser.sc something, which the computer's probably gonna wanna know. Explicitly. I can probably just move this, right? Come here. SCPT. So, what if we echo that? But say script wants to control Safari. It talked to it. I 
make sure. I oh, know there wouldn't be anything showing up. Yeah, here. Come on. Oh. I was so hopeful. It talked to it, though. Let me make sure I've got all that stuff right. This is it, right? Uh, it has to be, right? Because it was doing the thing. There you go. Oh, this is going to be one of those things, isn't it? Um, oh, wait. Yeah? Where'd it go? I lost it. Go back to it again. Crap. It... Um, echo shell x osa script e return uh oh zero whatever there's zero okay so that's working And it was talking to Safari. All right, so one potential option here. Come back to the script editor. See, to put it all on one line. To one line Apple script. Series of Apple script commands I need to implement in single line. Code is blue. So this is one command statement and blue to effective Apple script statement separates line break. There's no convenient way to write a multi statement line. For a special request, you can combine the two in a really ugly way by using delay as part of the expression. This does not sound like a good idea. Hmm. Bummer. Because what I could do, we're gonna have a script from a bash script, yeah, 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 we're doing that. Execute multi line application from. from the terminal, all right. So, how do we execute that script in the terminal with OSA script? The trick is to make each line. An execute script like so. Really? So what I'm wondering is if it matters that it's in a file. But I mean it shouldn't. OSA is just doing its thing. Alright, let's... Let's try and make a one-line script here.
No way this works. Wah wah. Turn one. Oh wait. Hang on. I only have one window. Does that mean does this work? No, I've got uh, here. Multiple windows. Four. Okay. Shit, that worked. All right. So now let's tr try this. I should probably be doing this because I think that's more PHP-ish. screen how about that I wonder if that's gonna be restart yes it is Six from September 28th. I haven't had an error in days, which kind of sucks because I was hoping there'd be one right now. Mm. So I could trigger something else to do this. And I mean, I could write I could just make it a little Python thing, but I like the idea of it being like, I like the idea of being on the web page and like clicking a button and having it just like be there. And so tell application Safari is that one account? Yeah. Why didn't this work? Cause it, it reached out to Safari. There's gotta be, it, it's, I'm sure it's a permissions and security thing. Um, But it's weird that it asked me for permission and I gave it permission and it didn't go. Um, I wonder if you could bounce it through. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna mess around for a second. Um, see that, yeah. Oops. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Alright, just for now. What I'm doing is probably horribly insecure, but... And bash. What's it called? Trigger? That bash? Okay, that worked. So now... Uh, what's it called? Actually, let's do this. Uh, say... I want to make sure I've got the exact right command. What's this going to do? Nothing. Ah, come on. See, that'll trigger it. But it won't, yeah, so it's it's got to be something in the permission. It can tell that it's coming from uh, Apache or something. But I was hoping that it would bounce. Um, let's see, how would you do, because wasn't I doing something? I guess I was just launching... Files, so I wasn't really executing anything, but I launch. Oh, I'm just opening a file, and then I'm telling Sublime Text to activate. I wonder if you can tell Safari to activate. already going to be oh no okay that talked hmm actually you know what i want to look at is where library Safari, JavaScript. Because uh, JavaScript I can put on one line. Um, Thanks for an application in JavaScript. OS, OS, OSA, OSA script. Should just find my machine before I launched. Bring application to the front, you change that line to this. Surprise, they're already open. It works like a charm. language JavaScript okay so I'm gonna build a command here for the command line right so this L JavaScript and then in here we had this Safari activate. All right, so what happens if we just run this? Oh, you probably got to pass E to it too, right? But 
let's take the that out of it. Can't find variable Safari. Let's look at this person's code again. Oh, Safari new application. Safari activate. Windows, Windows tab. Oh, look at this. Yeah, he's trying to set a tab. Okay, I think we had this in single quotes. Yes, no. Let's put this in single quotes. And put all that there. Boom. Okay, cool. So we got JavaScript going. Now, So now we need to do this with this and we've got to escape these. And let's see if we can get Safari to activate. I really should do this from Chrome. something wrong. You're all get her. Get her. It's far activated. Okay. Now let's see if we can talk to Safari with JavaScript on a single line. I don't know if it matters that it's calling an external file or not. Um Quit count. Ooh, returns a number of elements of a particular class. Make. I'm gonna lose all my windows messing with this. See also the standard suite. Okay. Window object name. All right, where was that script editor again? I'm in it. Uh, I should look at the other window. So set window count to count every window when it's true. What if we just do Let's try, well, actually the first thing is, let me see, can I print something? What's the, what's the way to print? No. Um, JavaScript, Apple, script, print. Print, do that a lot. Try this. Return one, whatever. And echo here and close that. Oh, broke it. Didn't return anything. Uh, I just want to get something printed. I should have saved that as it was, right? This works to activate Safari. Oops.
right? Oops. Wait, that shouldn't have... Oh. Ooh. Did that actually work then? Hang on. Yeah, okay, that worked. I just had it twice. I didn't have the other one commented out. Why do I keep bouncing around? Because I'm moving the mouse. So that works. There's a... that's not helping. Oh yeah. So let's get something to print out on the command line. Return statements are only valid inside functions. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, what's the name? There's no way that works. No, okay. Uh, what do we do? Console log, sure. That's how you do that. Okay. Now, let's see if we can make this go. In here. Who would have thought we need one more style of quote? Crap, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, good lord. Uh, console. No. This printed something, right? So we know that the print stuff works. So this worked. Gotta get something to return back. Why didn't that work? So it echoes back. Crap. I wonder if it's going to like standard 
error or something. Console log. What if I take this out of it? That shouldn't. So what's the... Oh, I wonder if that other thing was working and I just couldn't see it. Because OSA script wasn't returning. Do you do send output? Do you pipe it? Do you just pipe it? Oops, that was the wrong thing to delete. Right, so this is our thing. right mm, maybe I am I forget how all this stuff works JavaScript, Apple script, command line print. How do I write the standard output data using? Looks like this might not be possible. My script will produce output over a long time, however, it has come. And the short answer is that you don't. JavaScript will not return until the command is done, and Unix term cannot be. Created pipe. What you do, however, is put the command in the background. Sends out to it for a file and then read as it fills up. Create an Apple script I want to pass to memory script. We'll execute a run function, right hello world, standard data. We put it in a function. Does that do it? Written a standard data. And script editor the standard data are sent to the results window. I want the results window multiple times. JavaScript got node. Okay, whatever. Long version. JavaScript automation is buggy and half baked. Uh, there was. A, okay, I thought there was some uh, problems with that. Doesn't mean I'm not going to try and use it. And I was just writing a blog post or writing the update from last night's uh, stuff about how I wasn't going to, uh, or I got wary of very old software. Now I'm using it. Like there's different ways I could do this. Like I've got another way I can do this, but I want to see if I can solve it this way. Um, the easier way to do it would be just like run a Python script and have it go and get it and build the thing for me. But I kind of want to see if I can solve this on a web page. Um, of course, I could solve it on a Django page. Maybe I should just wait until I do that. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna wait until we do that. So we're gonna follow this a different direction. So. Alan Domain. Oh, that was an Evelyn. Uh, here. 
We're just going to do this. Do, 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 do. We are going to do something that looks a lot like um, Safari URL puller.py, which is cancel because we want to do a directory. Safari URL puller. URL puller. Oh, getting a little punchy. All right. User bin environment Python 3, even though that still works here. Just make sure we're in the right place. Because I always do this. We got our thing. Okay. Now what we're going to do. We're gonna find that other script that we just made and we get to move it. You're all getter. Uh, get rid of this. Oh, it made cat. Yeah, see, I need to get more used to uh, how to do piping and stuff. I hope this will work. I mean, I could just make an Apple script out of it if I really needed to do it. Um, but hopefully I can just trigger this and run it through Python and have that work. So what am I doing? Oh, I know what I'm doing. I need to put this in the place. Scratchpad, PyCharm, Safari URL puller. Got a lot of web stuff going on. Uh, Python external function. Command. One of these days I'm gonna remember this one. Alright. OSA S C R I P T. Sorry, allowing this will provide access to documents, data, and Safari. Yes, please. There we go. Completed process, args, OS, scripts. Why is it? Give me all that stuff. Is that coming from. Uh... Complete a process. Okay, so that's coming in the print, I guess. Why is it giving me uh, all this stuff? So, results equals that. Print results. What's that gonna do? Yeah, I don't want all this other crap. Uh, so, the thing that I've learned the other day, let's see if we can parse that out. Stand out, stand error. Oh, I wonder if it's. Uh... If 
we do this? Print that stuff, but only stand out. Standard out, whatever. That could work. Sweet. Let's actually try it on the right one. Whoa, what just happened? Built-in stop pie. Hopefully I didn't change that. I feel like I'm playing with a There's also a string in there, but I think that's what that should have done. I gotta remember to not do the other thing. Where's that nine coming from? Just want the results. So nice for actually multiple commands at once. However, less convenient have to manually handle the escaping shell characters. On the other hand, also let your rank manage. I'm just gonna try this. OS system. Because I am not messing with that right now. This kind of works. All right. And then we just do this and this and this and this and this. Take these out, do that, maybe print that, and see what happens. There you go. Why does it give me a zero? actually actually let's actually actually see if that really is above that yeah it is it's given the return code I don't want the return code I just want the text <sighs> I've actually got notes on this depends on your version of Python using simple approach is to use subprocess check output function. It turns a single runs a single program that takes only arguments as input. It returns the result exactly as printed to stand out. You need to write input to stand in, skip ahead to run or be open. Works for everything, but for more recent versions, it's no longer the recommended approach. Okay, modern versions. Yep, yeah, this is what I was looking for. If I have that. Processes. There you go. <sighs> yep. 
Yeah, to pull stand out directly without access to stand error in a way that will just capture that output, use this. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Um, it's weird that it's... I forget what the B is. If I returns a bytes object. So if I want a proper string, you need to decode it. Assuming you call the process returns you can... Yeah. Because in one liner, I think is what this is. Yep. Uh, let's do this because this is a good one. Kind of wish there was a uh, the comment. Where's the share button? There it is. Edit follow flag. Edited. So I'm going to just click on it to have it... Yeah, cool, if you just click on it, it does that. That's a good answer. I like this answer. Oh yeah, but if you... Oh yeah option clicked on it or command clicked on it. If you just click on it, it brings that up. I don't wish there was a way to like say go. Can you go? Oh, includes my user ID. Yeah, whatever. I'll use my user ID. Right. Oh, but it bounces. But does it? Am I 40? No, I'm 10 whatever. Yeah, I'm 102 401. Yeah, so it's not going to capture it. I was going to see if it hung on to it in the URL, I might do it just so I'd get credit for it if people clicked on the links, but whatever. It's not going to work. <sighs> a little punchy. Uh, bu 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 here. So we're going to get this. We're going to get a pie charm. We're going to... Up here. Plus a script. With this file. And nothing else. Stand it out. Because it's right. So, yeah, I don't totally get that, but that's okay. Print. Response. Everything else is. Ooh. I really need to look and see if you can remap those uh, hotkeys, because I'm going to. Like, every now and then what I think should select all the way down moves lines and like that's not helpful. What's gonna happen? Got it. Now I can already see one gotcha with this is gonna be um Well, actually, what I should do, I don't know. Uh, so, lines equals response dot split new line, right? That's how you do that. For line in lines, print line. Is that gonna work? Yeah, let's actually give it something we can see. Format line. Nope. Fine. Zoop. Cool. Uh and we interesting, we had a couple extras there. Alright, a little much. 
so now uh what we could just do is parts equals what well, so you could get I don't need to assemble this yet in that script. Because really all I want is the URL and the title. Uh, so we'll do that as our, here, we'll do that. Nope, yeah, whatever, as our token. So save that. Document cannot be saved. File has been chained by another application, huh? So anyway. We're gonna see our yeah, so we got our little squigglies in there. Uh, so now we can do URL equals line dot split on our squigglies part one. Print URL. I actually don't care about that error right now. That's fine, whatever. Um, it was splitting, it was, there wasn't anything to split on those last couple lines. I don't know why those are showing up, but I don't care right now, this is fine. Uh, I just wanna get the, the basics working. Oh, did I put in? Get browse tabs, yeah, okay, I did. I'm glad I switched to this. So now, beautiful soup. Does beautiful soup get pages? For pulling data out of HTML now. No, it does not. You gotta go get it. So you know what we're gonna use? Selenium, all right. Straight from last night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, selenium stuff. Selenium test one. Just gonna grab all this, put this in here. Oh, I need to document this stuff in my notes. Ah, uh, gonna get all this. And we're gonna put this here. And we're gonna say URL. URL. Uh, I want to see if I actually put a note in here that I can use. Wait, that's the wrong one. This one. Selenium, selenium, I should have ordered these. Web API driver. Thought I had one. Wait, get attribute. Nope. Thought I had one that listed the. Uh, Getting 
months in selenium this one get element by name because it should be title and then we're gonna take this down here so we've got a response we've got our url we get our url to see if this works whatever i'm running it with a bunch we'll see what happens just saw it flash something Name locate name. I couldn't find the title. Oh, I wonder, was that on my local host? Is that the first one that hit? Launchpad URL getter. Yeah, there was no. So try. Finally, right? So you do that. I guess I could have just fired up one selenium, but this will be a good test to see if this works. Crap. Of course, it starts with a dead one. All right, you go away. You go away. I'm trying to figure out where is it this one? Yeah, let's get you gone. I just want to see if I can get the basics working. Crap. Unable to locate element title. Uh, there is definitely a title in that URL. Oh, starting with a slash. Why is it starting with a slash? This is ugly development, but whatever. Okay, so there's the URL. Let's actually do this. Go ahead and move this up so we don't have to overhead us starting it every time. Oops. Oh, I have no idea what I just did. Completely throwing everything off. Don't know. Hotkeys are not the same. Why did I bring that back in? Should have. No. So get URL. Wait. Was getting them. Find element by name title. Like, if I click on this, and I view the source. Title. Get the element by name. By XPath, I could do an XPath link text, partial text, tag name. That sounds maybe like maybe what we're looking for. I also don't understand why the try didn't kick it out. What's that gonna do? Crap. 
Try to run command without establishing a connection. Oh. Wait, did I not print it? Hang on. What the hell? How do you... Does that work? Hit something. Tag name text. Why didn't that work? tag name title it found it because it's doing a thing it's not down at the end of it no what's going on all right let's try parent Whatever, Let's see what that does. that's the ID. Right, it's all that. Oh, it's a session. It doesn't have... Parents a session. Okay. something new. Uh, new file. Get page title.py. Selenium test. We're going to just grab all this stuff. Throw it to get page title. I'm going to run this just to make sure we're on the right page here. Oh, that's not the wrong page. See? Ah, wish it would do that. Yeah, that was the other one. Got to do it this way. These days, I'll get that hotkey in my hand for doing it. Cool log framer Bob Gibbons dies. Gibson dies at 84. It's a bummer. All right. So I'm just going to see if I can walk this through. So. I mean, if we're going to do it, I'm going to use my own site.
So here's the title. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna do this. just do slash less title but like I don't understand why it aren't working all right we're gonna try this Okay, I guess that's kind of a good sign. By tag name. Why can't I click on that? Look at it by name. Whoop. I know. Uh, by tag name. strategy, the first element with a given tag name will be returned. If no element matches the tag name, no such thing will be erased. For instance, blah, blah, blah. Give my class name. I mean, it's finding it, because it's not throwing an error. All right, let's try something new. Uh, let's do h3 and see what that gets us that's the title oh whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on maybe is there an h3 up here okay so the first H3 is up there. Maybe it doesn't work in the head? I'll bet that's it. I'll bet it doesn't work in the head. I like this color. Looks super deep blue. Uh, How about that's it exactly? Well, this is a good thing. I like this. I've changed everything over to that. So now the question is, will anything work in that document? Can I use XPaths? HTML body. Okay, that's a good looking thing. So I think if I just do slash slash title. Let's get the right thing. Find my XPath. Hey, XPath. Been a while. That should be all the titles. I guess technically I only want the first one, which I think is one index. Ah, uh, let me just try this. Does this give me an X path if I click on it right? Add, edit, 
copy XPath. Thank you. You want it, you got it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And like it's finding it. That's the thing I don't understand because it's not erroring out. Like if we do that. That explodes, because you can't find the element. So it's finding the element. So step one, find the element. Step two, try this again. Snort it right into the mic. I'm super hungry. Is there a way... I should work on that at some other point. Um, let's see if there's a way to like dump an object. I've been to this page before. Yeah. content of them. Oh, Vars gives you this stuff. Let's do R for R. Well, actually, hell, yeah, just look at all this stuff. Why don't you work? I mean, here's the Selenium test one. We ran this, and element.txt showed us text. Let's look at what it was showing us. How about that? It was right here. Inspect. Yeah, it's the text inside the tag. Somebody else asked the same question. Oh, nope. Crap. <sighs> Thought I was onto something. Get page title. There we go. Get title of the girl instead of page title. Oh, is there a get title? Well, that would be super handy. Selenium. 
I mean, it has to be, right? That's web, uh, web element title. Find element, give inner HTML. Web driver, new Firefox driver, driver. Get title. Hello. I don't like that that has semicolon behind it. Yep, nope. <sighs> hmm. String actual title, title, base URL, get. See, this is some language. Uh, however, aha, I have an idea. They're saving the same place. It's Java. Also Java. But uh, what if we print out and see what driver has in it? Driver. I don't like that it's underlined red. We already do it again. Kinds of stuff. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, look at that. What is that gonna do? Whoops. Damn, all right, jeez. Okay, so keep all this stuff up here. Let's clean this up. Trick is, Title's not actually what I was after. Um, what, what I'm after is like a description. So hopefully the metadata is still addressable. It's super weird that you could that you could find the title element, but you couldn't get to it. That seems just odd to me. Uh, also, I want to change this up just a little bit. Um, just to make it a little more whatever. Uh, how, I guess it's gonna close. I was gonna try and return it. But then I guess the close doesn't happen. Oh, I guess, but if I close it, oh, duh, hang on. start actually making some of these a little bit more reasonable since I'm posting them. It worked. 
it's worked. All right, hang on. I should have done the Sandy Mets thing and stayed one step away from green. Oops. Right. This is where it worked, right? Okay, working. Let's get rid of all the junk first. Right, make sure we're still working. It'd be nice if it went faster, but we're gonna take it slow. Oh, I wasn't printing it. I'm getting tired, which is appropriate given the hour. Page title, now I'm gonna jump through it again kind of fast, because I think I'm okay this time. Drive to close. Return page title. Title. Please work. And there was much rejoicing. All right, good. Uh, and so now, last little thing. We're gonna split out the URL, because we wanna make this a function that we can really use. URL, URL. I'm not worried about the fact that we're duplicating, uh, uh, firing up every time, that's fine. So one last run. Okay. Trick, of course, is I don't want the page title. What I want is, and we're gonna do this in its own little file. Um, what I want is a description. So let's see what this page has. It doesn't have one. That's not the description I'm looking for. Oops, what's going on there? Yeah, not the description I'm looking for. I'll bet Stack Overflow has one though. Whoops, come here. Show me. Here's a Twitter description. But I would be surprised if they don't have just a straight meta description. Search. Huh, I'm not familiar with that one. Twitter description, OG description, item property description, stack exchange in it. Ooh. Sorry. This is the source. I want to come here and see if this is better. Why does it keep going back to the title? I don't see where it's highlighting. It's not helping me. Oh, it's two underscores. Okay, gotcha. 
So we're up there. There's description right down here. That's what's finding. Wow, they don't have a meta description. Interesting. That kind of surprises me. Uh, interesting. We've got the Twitter description. Which also kind of surprises me that they don't have a Facebook. OG, I think it's the Facebook ones. Property OG description, maybe that all just mushes into the same thing. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's see if we can find this one. Get page description. Hi. This is our page title. We're going to just copy that into here. Do that. Just run it to make sure we're allowed. Nope, that's the wrong file. Stop it. Does that do it? Cool. Oh, you know it's gonna be funny. There's no way that you could parse it with uh, without the script, but if it just gave you the full page, I don't know, maybe you could. Um, I don't wanna do that in AppleScript though. JavaScript maybe. All right, so we don't want the page title. Oops. We're going to get an element. By. Text. Just take a swing and see what happens. No. Uh, oh. Just to keep the same, keep it actually as a thing. Did that hop again? thinks it found it though oh man I hope you can get the stuff in the head I mean I could do this another way I could just scrape the page 
But I kind of like the idea of using selenium because I've spent all this time using it. It's kind of fun. Uh, let's see what happens. Brent. Dirt. Dirt. Oh, maybe it's like a value or something because it's not really text. Yeah, no, text doesn't make sense. It needs to be like an attribute. Yeah, it's gonna be like a get attribute thing. I'm just gonna nuke all those. Give me a get attribute. I think that's a thing, isn't it? Find an anonymous element by attribute. Get attribute. going on why is this what is going on Content is all that jazz. Can I move this now? Yes, we're only so far. Wait, question about. Reliability. Here is the, in some instances, get title. In some instances, it gets title. Yeah, so they threw the, the description is all this stuff. Oh, crap. I figured it would just be a straight line. Um,. At a minimum, I thought it would be that. Uh, Twitter title. Content. What's the actual title? Title, web driver, question about selling time method, software engine, stack exchange. Uh, I don't know, let's try it, see what happens. I don't know if this is how you get attributes or not. Uh, we're gonna print that. Actually, I guess we could just send that back. Let's see if it, what we get. Swing. Let's see how we actually use it. Looks like we put it in friends. Because it's a method. Let's just see what that does. We'll actually go look while we're doing that. I was on this. I was here the other day, yesterday, the other day. There you go. And then someone says, okay, well, this is actually good that we saw this one as a craziness to start with. Um, Cause now what we can do is Replace all the new lines. 
I have not listened to 500 songs, and this one's back. I think the shuffle algorithm on Microsoft's Groove is lacking. Uh, okay, so let's see. Whoops. Pi string replace. Isn't that obvious? Substrings, search match. Where's Python string replace? Capture match matches. Oh, CSV with data scrubbing. Ugh, that wasn't yuck. Python string replace. String replace. Whatever. It'll get there. So we can find the actual docs for it. Highly active question. Listen to use string replace. So will that work with new lines, I guess is the question. It do place it with a space so it's get something in there. All right, so this is the basics of it. I'm about to call it, but um, let's see if we can finish it here real quick. So we couldn't get our title. That's fine. Oh, I'm brain dead at this point. Yeah, I'm I'm done. Um, I'll do I'll do another quick stream and just add it to this tomorrow. Um, but so the things to do are in the page description. There's different ways you can have description that like all the pages aren't gonna have Twitter description necessarily. And so we'll go down and we'll parse the various descriptions and figure out which ones we want to use first. And then we'll just print all that stuff out. Like that's that's the end of it, is, I think, as far as I can see, but I'm just not there right now. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else to kick around on this. Um, I think that's gonna be it. So cool. Uh, thanks folks, Happy, hope you had a good time. Uh, we'll see you, uh, we'll post stream notes about this uh, in the next day or so and, uh, and have them out. So see you, thanks, be kind.